Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Monday, October 25th, 2021. The NASDAQ did throw a couple of curveballs today, but that's not unusual for the NASDAQ, particularly on the open. Uh, but I'm starting here on the four hour chart because we did also get our answers today, although they were a little bit deceptive in how they delivered them. Uh, the answers did come. And that was that the market is moving higher in the minute fifth wave. We're now completed a minute three and four. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, looking at a line chart for a more orthodox bottom and a cleaner look at a wave count. In any case, what we're now doing is a minor, not excuse me, a minute fifth wave up to complete this minor C wave. And the market has just upped the probability rating for a break towards at least the existing high of 15,709, if not higher. So new highs come into play for both the NASDAQ and the S&P. The S&P has already, again today, moved to new all-time highs. And I believe that those will be exceeded. If we're looking for the same type of a move here in the NASDAQ, they made a good effort today. They swamped the other markets in terms of uh, percentage higher. So that would have to continue. But we'd be looking at a move above 16,000. And so that's back in play again. And it's been left on the chart since we started to break higher and I changed the count, looking for this B wave. Remember, this is an immediate A, we're looking for an immediate B. And now we're looking for an irregular B wave. And that does suggest a new all time highs, which the market can do. And the position that it's coming off of, it fits very cleanly. In that, oftentimes, when you get a very extended finish to a very long term bull market, the market tends to correct the high twice. So this would be once and then it's going up and it'll come down again. So the, the orthodox high, I, for me, remains here for right now. And that what we're just doing isn't a regular B wave and what will follow is quite a devastating C wave down. Now, there's going to be a lot of debate and people are going to call me, you can't and all kinds of things, but this has happened previously. And whether the NASDAQ and all the other markets go up or it's just Actually, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P, and, and the Russell gets left behind, it's not going to make any difference. The Russell is still trading in a box, a very long-term box. It really, it's been in since last March. In any case, the NASDAQ, we're in that fifth wave. It is also subdivided. So let me go back down now to the hourly chart so we can take a peek. I've laid out some groundwork. We now have the probability of breaking to new highs and getting above 16,024. One layer that I will put in once I get back down to the hourly chart is <clears throat> what we can now maybe expect for wave five. Wave five and a Fibonacci basis is related to wave three. So what we need to do is to put in those uh, extensions. So that's where we're gonna start. We're going to go to this. We're going to go to this low because this is actually where the low occurred. So I'm going to try to be as accurate as possible. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we've already surpassed that first level, which was fifteen thousand four ninety, so just below fifteen thousand. Excuse me, fifteen thousand five hundred. So our next stop is fifteen thousand six ten, and that. To provide a pause again, remember in the fifth wave, and it is subdividing, so it's breaking to in its own three, and the third is also subdivided. So we still have more upside within the third before we even do a little pullback and then another up. So here's our some of our overlap, and this actually could contain and turn the market lower. Right? We open the probability. So it carries a little bit higher weighting of the possibility or the probability of reaching here, that it's not at 
and nor will it ever be until it gets there. So, because there's too many stopping points in between and there's too many things that can happen that just turn that right back negative. So again, characteristically, B waves, deceptive, funny, racing, crazy, volatile, both directions volatile, sudden moves up, sudden moves down, every which way. That's what we're getting. The bias is up because of the period of time that we're in called earnings season. And it seems that we're just moving from one earnings to the next earnings. And so you know, that's all because now we have to give forward guidance, et cetera, et cetera. Facebook reported today, they're willing to shove all that Snapchat news, all of that you know, bad news coming out about Facebook and the quote unquote Facebook papers, et cetera, et cetera, showing a lot of toxic culture uh, there, a, a corporate culture, corporate culture at Facebook. Well, okay, you deal with that Facebook as long as you continue to make money and look good, we'll buy you. And that's pretty much what's happening. So who knows when that may or may not catch up. Tomorrow we have AMD, Microsoft, and Google. Google has already bid up $22 from where it closed. And that was coming on the heels of Facebook's earnings. And Amazon is bid up eh, a little bit, about seven bucks, eight bucks from where it closed based on Facebook's earnings. These are what affected it because of the advertising, because of customer bases, et cetera, et cetera. In any case, I do think we have additional upside to do. So we have next resistance at 15,610. I think we should be able to reach that fairly easily. And this volatility that now has continued will be just as strong in both directions. And I'm going to open this. I'm going to try to open that up. And to show what we had today. So let's open that up. This was the opening. And it was pretty wild. It, they found some buying support. They bought it up and then turned it all the way down and then just snapped off of that level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put change this. So that was the tail, which was a bottoming tail. But now I'm gonna turn it over and let's take a look at the line chart, which does not include the tails. Look at the difference. It ends up being a one, two. But now I want you to, again, let's look at it on the candle chart. That's it right there, right? 6 a.m. to the, the opening. Let's go back, oops, let's go back over. This is important because it just, it shows you four, five, six. It basically came and went all from the same place. If it will work, seven. So you can't even see it. But here it zipped up and down and came back. And as, as just as doing Elliott Wave, it comes out fine. I know what it's doing. You know, one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. And it's subdivided. So there it's one of five. Two of five, one of three, two of three of five, right? So right, we can carry the train on, but it's subdividing and it's roaring. So this is three of three type moves. And if you were to look at it on this level, you might not come up with the same response because of the tails. As a trader, we need the tails. Because as they say, the tails tell the tale. And that's true. Because if you were short and you were believing that the market, okay, NASDAQ, you are taking Facebook, you are thinking that not, Facebook's not going to do well, blah, blah, blah. And that's what it looked like. So you're breaking down. 
that then off of this level, if that's all we had was this and then here, it looks like ABC, we're heading lower, get out of the way. And we're looking for it to break below that level. And then what did it do? Stopped on a dime, buyers roared. I mean, roared, came right back in, took it all the way back up. And when the bar closed, gave a little tip and then went, whoop, boom, gonna go higher. And it did for the rest of the morning. So that's an important part that I need to add. When we're looking at it, you can see much more clearly, again, you need the candles for trading. So don't get me wrong. I will use candles for trading. But when I'm sitting and I want to confirm a count and I want to look and see what the market is actually doing, I will refer often over to the line chart. And that's what I'm showing you on the clipping tonight. So here, this made it clear that the third finished at this high from last week, from last Thursday. Then it did a very clean four, right? Looks like it's a five waves down, but it actually is AB. And then this is three, four, five. So it's a C wave. This starting here is a C wave. There's a one, two up in there. But on the line chart, it doesn't really show, but it's there. So it makes more sense. Corrective decline. What was this five? But remember, I was saying this is five webs up. Maybe it completed everything. Maybe it just did the three. We got our answers. There it is. <clears throat> Here's the four. Now we have more clarity as to where we're going for the balance of this week. So I do think we're going higher. And I do think that we need to now. Let's shift back over and look at, our, look at the candles. And let me just open this back up again. So it's a little bit easier to pull down those prices. <clears throat> so we're looking for the completion of the third. Here's one candidate, here's candidate number two. We're also looking for another little four and then a five to complete minute wave five, to complete minor wave C, to complete intermediate wave B. Now we've already determined that <clears throat> the rally today gave a little bit higher probability waiting to the upside. We have these two points, 1.236, 1.382. Those are percentages of wave A to complete wave B as an irregular B wave. That's 16,024, 16,220. Now we have points in between. Our closest overlaps are the first one is right here. We have 100% on both. Uh, that, that this is the old, this is the existing high, 15,000, <coughs> excuse me, 709. And it's, it's eight, it's seven, eight points, 25 or 75. And then we have 50% where my new way five, would be 50% of minute wave three, same spot. So that's our first overlap, that it just equals the high, equals the existing high, finishes turns. Somehow I don't think so. So, but it could. But then we have 618, 15,804. Now we're moving to new highs. We have 875, 942, and then our first one. So our first real overlapping zone is 942 to 16,025. Kind of right there, a little bit large, but the market is making those types of moves. And again, it could be a tail. It could be a topping tail, slam up, topping tail, then boom, that's it. Wave, minute wave five would be equal to minute wave three at 16,118. Then we have 220 as our next zone. So that's the next zone. It's 100 points, but that's the way the market's moving. And again, what if it just shows up being a spike and that's it? We've got a lot of earnings reports coming, big players coming. Tomorrow, again, AMD, Microsoft, Google. Then on Thursday, Amazon, Apple. 
and then we still have to fill in the blanks, we still have others that are going to be coming out in November. We have PayPal, PayPal coming out in November. <clears throat> we have others, NVIDIA, that will be coming out. Tesla, got a contract from Hertz for a thousand Model 3s and they took the stock up $115. Well, because it's going to, Tesla's on fire. Look at that great order it just got. It's a thousand cars. If that's all they make, they're not going to make that much money. Black, market thought differently. And there must be something else in there. You know, panic on the covering of the shorts when it broke a thousand bucks or broke 900 bucks. Who knows? But here we are. Trade what's in front of you. Everything is adding to the probability scale of pushing higher. So I am looking for higher tomorrow. I do believe that, that, uh, Pullbacks will be shallow, but please bear in mind, volatility is increasing again, and it increases to both sides. For example, this morning's opening, volatility up, replaced by a strong shove lower, replaced by an even stronger shove higher. Volatility is real, and it's there. So we need to be able to trade it. So again, don't get stuck or married to a position. And this is the voice of experience because guess what? I did it again today. I'm a human being and it costs you money. Who needs to go down you know, fifteen or $1,600 to prove that, gee, I'll wait you out. I'll sit you out, NASDAQ, when actually it was, t it was demonstrating that it was turning and it was going to go. And this is all before lunch. <laughs> So I, you know, regurgitated my breakfast. But in any case, you can get over it. And if you pay attention to the price action and you pay attention to uh, where volume is coming in, and they were obviously pushing higher with greater volume and just overwhelmed any remaining sellers. Or the sellers was just a setup and they came in and they put those orders out knowing they had these buy orders to put in. So first they bought it up. So the poor suckers that had to buy on the mar buy on market on the opening. Well, they did. And then because these, these the same sellers just knew that they were going to do that, got better prices for them, sold it all down, knowing that they had buyers that would give great prices to them. Whatever, whatever their excuse, if, even if that's the case, who cares? The fact is that they did it. And the fact is that it did it fast. And you got to pay attention. You got to realize it. You got to see it. Otherwise, you're going to get cooked. You will definitely get cooked. And there's no reason to do it. There's just no reason to it. Not when you can catch it and then get back up on your feet. Now, this is another one. I mean, I did actually catch it and I got out and with a very, very, very minor loss. Then I joined the party again and decided to do it again here. Thinking, okay, that was it. Oh, see, they really are going to go down. No, told me the same thing again. Went down, came down, look at the strength, and when it equal there, when the bodies of the candles struck and this turned green, boom, that was your buy signal. I didn't pay attention. I did eventually get it here, but I took off part of the trade as it came down because I got, I got money. You know, I was in, in the plus, but then it changed and it just zipped right back. And again, here's your second opportunity to reverse it. Because look what happens after. Now I was out by this by this time, and then I did buy it. So you make back your losses, but I could have caught it earlier. So that's what I'm saying. Don't get married. Don't get stubborn on a position, because the market is always priced perfectly. And if we can just accept that, I know it's obnoxious, but if we can accept it, you're in good company, and you're going to be able to trade that and not worry. I'm not being concerned. Play along. The market's telling us. I don't care why. The proof will be later. We'll get, look what happens again. This was the bell. And after the bell, boom, Facebook. Love you. So, you know, very tradable. I don't trade so much after the bell. But you can. In any case, we're subdividing, we're moving higher. We look for these upper resistance levels to come into play. 15,610 is really next. This 
is no man's land up here. There's nothing there. We have to go way over before we'll be able to see any type of resistance. Right? And it's going to be price resistance, but it's from way back here in September. So now we have to go back into September to find resistance. For example, some price resistance there, which is where it's kind of hovering around right now. But that's what they're doing. So we can use it and we can keep going. We have some more just below 60. Then it jumps. And we have 610. So there's not a lot to kind of before we get there or even before we would get here. Just saying. I believe pullbacks will be shallow. The market should move higher. Trade smart, use your moving averages. Use your price action and have a good fun day. <laughs> the next update will be on Tuesday, the 26th.